Hey, everybody. Welcome to Quarantine Conversations. It's your girl, Casey Star Long. And so I'm just inviting you to be part of today's QC. Now, if you're like, who is this person on my screen? How did she get on my screen? I want to welcome you because there are always first time viewers. So um, for three weeks, I've been doing something called quarantine conversations. And I wish that I could say that this was totally my idea, but I actually saw someone else doing it. Her name is Crystal Evans Hurst. She's the daughter of Tony Evans. And while I was at home sewing fabric face masks for hours upon hours, I was looking for just content, you know, feeling like, man, I'm missing community. I'm missing engaging. I'm missing interacting with my girlfriends. And so, I was listening to Crystal and she was having these quarantine conversations where she would interview her friends and just other women that she knew. And they would just talk about life in quarantine. What is God speaking to you? Just helpful tips. How are you taking care of your hair, self-care, stuff like that. And so I really enjoyed those conversations. And if you know me, I love to hear people's stories. So for about seven years, I was actually the host of a Christian radio show here in St. Louis. And so I began to get really excited. I was like, you know, there are women that I admire. There are girlfriends that I would just love to just connect with and talk to. And it's not pretentious. We can just have a conversation. So that's what we've been doing. So for three weeks, y'all, we've been on this journey. And um, I'm really excited about today's guest. So I want to encourage you to grab your favorite hot drink. I have my trusty blue cup I don't know. You can't really see the smoke coming out, but I got some red tea in here. And again, for another day, I've decided to put just a little cayenne pepper in my red tea. Just I need I just need a little spice, a little spice. I hear it's supposed to be good for the metabolism as well. So I got my cayenne pepper in my tea. And so I want to know, what are you drinking? You know, what's your favorite warm drink? Last time y'all gave me some really good tips. So what's in your cup? today. If it's water, whatever it is, just type it in the comments. I am nosy and I want to know. So go ahead and share. So you guys also, for those of you all that this is your first time ever connecting with me, I invite you to go visit my website. You can find all the information about me right there at inspiredoverflow.com. And so today y'all, we have a guest and I'm calling her my sister. So she heard me share on somebody else's broadcast about how I didn't have any biological sisters. And uh, it was really one of my heart's desire to just really connect more with women and be more intentional about it. And so I was like, you know, one of the things God just put in my heart was like, if you want friends, show yourself friendly. And so I was like, yeah, I just call women. Hey, sis, how you doing? Call things that are not as though they are. And so she sent me a message and she was like, yeah, I heard you say that. And she says, you know, you're you're my sister or let's be sisters. So she's my sister. And so you are, too. If you want to be my sister, hey, I'm here for it um, because we're better together. So I see y'all coming in and hey, y'all, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. So, Levine, you're not drinking anything yet. You still got time to get something to drink. Oh, Chrissy. You got tea with almond milk and cinnamon. So um, Chrissy's going to be a guest later on this week. So I'm looking forward to talking to Chrissy, who is a doula, entrepreneur, mother, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to have a great conversation with Chrissy. But today, y'all, we're going to be joined by Miss Tony Jordan, my sister. She's your sister, too. And so we're going to have just a good conversation. So I'm about to bring her up. And let's talk. Hey, sister. Hey, sister. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. I just You're not going to complain. I am doing good. Okay, good, 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 good. So, Tony, I don't know if you had a chance to look at, well, I, I've seen your comments. So I know you've seen at least one of these QCs. So I saw, yeah. I know you've seen at least one. And so... Typically, the the women that I have had on, I've had relationships with for at least a couple of years. And our paths crossed um, years ago, right? 
Um, so yeah. when I was in politics, mm -hmm. I believe, and I remember I had a prayer breakfast, the first ever mm -hmm. event yes. that I did. Yes. And yes. Uh, you were there. Yeah. And recently, my husband took a class and you were his instructor. So, um, and so our paths have, have really crossed yeah. um, now. And so I want, um, the reason how my husband's path crossed with you is because my husband, um, he was addicted to drugs mm -hmm. in the seventies. And then I think also like prescription drugs and alcohol in the eighties and the nineties, he recently celebrated 19, 20 years clean, mm -hmm. but, um, he attended a class because now what he does is he helps others that are in recovery. And yeah. so you were one of, you were his teacher for him mm -hmm. to be, become a certified peer, peer support specialist. So just let people know, how did you even get into teaching those in recovery? So this is a way for you to share your story. Yeah. So to begin with, the most important part about Alfred Casey is that Alfred used to come to Vandalia Women Prison and um, he came with Transformation Church I believe but he would tell his story about how he was in recovery and everything and I was like if he can do it I can do it your husband gave me hope Wow! that once I walked out of them doors whoo girl you just touched me there once I walked out of them doors a Vandalia that I could live a life without a substance. Mm -hmm. You know, he was very hopeful, encouraging and everything. And he was the one that planted that seed in me. So when I saw him in my class, it was like, you know, here he is again. And I had to let him know because I hadn't saw him for years. Yeah. You know, I um, had got out of prison in um, 06. And so I hadn't saw him till when he take that class, maybe two, three years ago yep. or something. I hadn't saw him nowhere, but, you know, in my story and as I told it, he was that person, that pivotal person that helped me to know and gave me some hope, even a glimpse of light that I can come back to St. Louis and not pick up a substance and can live a productive life. So, yeah. Yeah. I've done a lot. He he played a big part in, in my recovery path. Yeah. So for those of you all that are just now joining, we're having quarantine conversation with my sister, Tony Jordan. And um, in the description, I, I mentioned that Tony is a community hero. And, and I'll share later about why I call her a community hero. But I mentioned how our paths really began to cross and how they crossed recently where she began to she she facilitated a class for my husband mm -hmm. about ways to help people in recovery who are struggling with substance abuse. And it just so happened that years prior, my husband used to minister to her in prison. And so here were kind of like the roles were reversed. Tony, you were <laughs> able to pour into a person who had poured into you. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just think that that is so cool. But I want to talk about who you were before prison. Okay. You know, um, let, let's talk about, you know, what your life was like back then. My life before prison was very dark. It was, um, I was hopeless, helpless, defenseless, like didn't have any goals, um, no aspirations as to whether I was going to have a life. My, my, um, my priority was my substance. And I began using like at around 13 or 14 by just drinking, smoking marijuana, not knowing the disease of addiction or uh, where it would take me. And, um, you know, our time went on. I went to Catholic grade school, St. Matthew's right there, Sarah Maffitt. Went on from there to Bishop DeBerg and graduated, going to college. And um, I had a daughter at about 18. 
Then I had another daughter at 23, and at 23 is when um, crack cocaine hit the streets of St. Louis in the 80s. And I got hooked on that drug, and I just thought it was a death hold, and it would never let me go. I, I would get clean, you know, and leave the drug alone, but some things to tell me, try one more time, one more mm -hmm. time, one more time for what? What was I missing? But I did. Mm -hmm. You know, my mind kept staying there, and I kept allowing that devil to trick me back into that bondage, and it was a horrific just spiraling out of control that just time of my life that I never thought I'd get past. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was that last time when I was in prison when Africa came and, you know, I wanted better. I went to prison April 6th of 2006, of 2004. And um, it was 10 days later that I was told my mother had passed away. So that played a, a big part and me wanting to come out here and be the woman that God had placed me on this earth to be. And that was one of the things that came to me as I was going, walking up to canteen one day um, after my mother had passed. And I was told that, and um, I needed to be that woman. God had allowed me to be a mother. I was a sister. I was a wife. Mm -hmm. You know, I was supposed to be friend or uh, have friends and be a friend, you know, a aunt, a grandmother, and I just wasn't playing none of those roles. I was a selfish young lady just being me and just had all the um you know, things I thought, you know, that I would never do, I had done. Yeah. And um, it took me, you know, down some roads and, and, and back roads that I never thought I'd see. But I saw them, you know, but today I, I'm here. I am here. I'm alive. I lost some sisters out there. And, um, you know, but I made it out. I try to encourage other women to get out and support them in it as well. And, um, you know, facilitating a group of women who are struggling or have struggled like I have, mm -hmm. you know, with mental health, with substance use and, um, you know, whatever. They they may not have an issue, but they circle and support and we support one another. It's not a therapeutic group. It's not a process group. It's a, it's a peers group. It is ran by peers. You know, I don't call myself the you know, a higher authority person over none of them because they teach me as well as me being there for them. So this has been an awesome path, you know, like I used to regret my my path in addiction, but it has brought me to be who I am today and to be more grateful for each day that I wake up and God put breath in me. Like this morning, I woke up to um, a young lady that I used with her daughter dying from asthma, you know, and so I was calling her and, you know, just all this COVID things going on and, you know, it, it, it has just been a, 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 a moment for me, but, you know, yeah. I still press forward because I got to do what I got to do for me and I want to show people that in spite of what happens around us, we can still move forward, you know, let's, let's move forward in this, even with COVID, you know, I take my precautions, I go out when I have to, because I'm still working with people who are coming out of prison, people who are um, a part of my group already, but they may need food, I'm gonna take you a gift card, you know, whatever I can do, I'm gonna try to assist those people that the struggle don't stay you know, with them or they don't, they, or that they feel alone, you know? Sure. So for those of y'all that are just now joining, we're having a conversation with Tony Jordan. And in the description, I call Tony a community hero. And she kind of alluded a little bit to it as she was telling her story. But um, Tony, I know that, you know, we, we always talk about what quarantine looks like. And for you, quarantine looks like you are helping 
others that are coming out of prison. People are coming out of prison right now, even in the midst of this COVID. We've actually yes. seen prisoners being released. Can you talk just a little bit about what your work day looks like while we are in quarantine? So my work day looks like I wake up every morning, I check in with my boss and let her know what my today will look like. But we always have a weekly meeting on Mondays to talk about where we are. So that keeps us connected with each other on a mm -hmm. Zoom call. But I would type in, you know, send an email, let her know what today may look like. And today may not even go that way because I may get calls. I may get an email that'll pull me in another direction. Mm -hmm. She'll never know probably unless I tell her or the next day. So, um, but I will send that email to let her know what I'm to do. Um, I check in with some of the women that I know that may need me a little more than others. I um, also am a grandmother who I care for a five-year-old. So during um, the school days, which last Friday was our last day, hooray. <laughs> you know, because during this quarantine, I have been teacher, cafeteria worker, the principal, the reading teacher, mm -hmm. you know, the math. I have been that besides doing my own two jobs, you know. And, and being a mother, being a wife, and, and just assisting other people, just encouraging them because Sorry, some of them me. are at home alone, you know, and, and they don't have no one. But I got, like, children here with me and my grandson that keeps me a little occupied. But quarantine and recovery has wanted me to, like, do something. You know, I had a lot going on. First, I was just sitting here all distraught by what was going on around me, people dying every day. You're looking at news and TV and all they could talk about was those that were dying, 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 you know, and I just, well, what, 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 what am I going to do here? You know, I was like, I don't want to keep hearing about that every day. So I was glad they started saying the people who were recovering once people did begin to recover because that's, that was my focus. Don't mm -hmm. let's not focus on, the the bad i'm an optimistic person so i want to know what else going on and you know but that has helped me to um want to do something different and not waste my time being in this lockup i didn't think it'd be like this you know i have read in the bible and read the bible i'm not a bible reader every day but knowing that it was plagues back then and what it was and, you know, I'm just like, you know, looking at I'm a visual person. So when somebody showed that picture of just the red splotches of like, you don't know who has got COVID or they probably don't know that they carrying it. But it made me to just stand strong, do the things I was supposed to do, wash my hands as I done always washing bleach water. My mom used to have us bathing in bleach water, you know, <laughs> so I was, you know, that person, but just to keep my distance, that six feet, and that's hard for me, because I'm a sure. hugger, you know, I'm a mm -hmm. hugger, I'm a supporter, and that has been very hard for me, and that's been one of the challenging things, but that is my day, like, you know, checking on women, like I Saturday, I had a lady that was, um, a few uh, months short from seven years of recovery, she relapsed and Queen of Peace and none of the centers is open to take people inpatient and she is doing heroin and, and fentanyl. And so I had a friend that um, owned Sana Lake Recovery and got in touch with him. They got her in. I drove her there to Dittmer, Missouri Saturday and she's in there recovering, you know, because I wouldn't want to get the call about she didn't die in this process. You know? Right. So, so, and that leads me to my next question. I had just heard from just kind of, you know, casually that um, drug dealers weren't necessarily mm -hmm. able to get their supply as much because mm -hmm. of COVID. And so I was just wondering, because you have, you know, boots on the ground. Are you seeing that it's it's harder for addicts to get their drugs? Well, just like um, she told me, she started out, um, she was a heroin user. She started out using pills, you know, mm -hmm. then the pills, you know, that's how most of people get addicted to heroin because you got those opioid pills, which is 
very similar to the heroin, um, the drug heroin itself mm -hmm. with fentanyl. So that's how she started out. But then she switched over to just doing heroin with fentanyl or fentanyl. And so, like, it's out here, but it ain't uh, plentiful as it would be because, yes, it has. COVID has whew, put a, a blockage to a lot of things. But people in a drug crisis is still out here too, suffering and 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 needing the support and help that that they need. And the top priority right now is COVID, but it's also a person's life. Like we lose people to this COVID. We lose. <laughs> Telling to be quiet. Yeah, You're on quiet. <laughs> I'm on live. Okay. <laughs> I tell him we're we're I'm laughing. You know, we understand like, yeah. that this, this is, is and so this is what it's like. That's you know, right. This is at this home. Is this is it. This and is I life. tell people, you know, they're like you call the the insurance company or whatever, and they be like, Well, you know, due to COVID, you may hear a doorbell ring yeah. or you may yeah. hear a dog boy. Just know we have people working from That's home. right. So, sorry, you all, but hey, <laughs> pay no attention to them, okay? This is life. Yeah, so you know, we um, I drove her to Denver, Missouri, and that's where she is. And yes, it is, but people gonna go to another uh, um, extreme and, and try something different if they drug is not available. You know, just like the pills ran out for her, and and so she went on to the drug she knew and really wanted. And, you know, just think if that ain't there, that's just like with alcohol. If people can't get alcohol, then there they is trying to drink up a perfume, whatever may have alcohol yes. in it. My gosh, you, you know, if, if you are a person addicted to a substance, it's a no matter what thing. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get that drug in me. So, um, Tony, you you are employed through the uh, criminal justice ministry here in yes. St. Louis. So you work with uh, individuals coming out of prison. You yes. help get them uh, services. You lead support groups for mm -hmm. women coming out of uh, prison. You are a, a peer specialist. Yes. Um, you are a trainer to help people. You're also a mental health advocate. Um, what are people coming out of prison what is that like for them to come out now in the midst of this COVID-19? Wow. We have some people, Casey, that um, have not been out of prison in like 10, 20 years. So like coming out and, all, you know, a cell phone, you got them coming out to all things. No more, um, what, telephones on the street or anything like mm -hmm. that. So... It, it just varies from a person's incarceration time to what it is. But, you know, it, they are experiencing COVID-19 in prison as well. So, you know, they are aware of things like that. But it becomes like a little um, dependent because we try to set people up in um, an apartment, you know, their food, a telephone to communicate with us and, and things like that. So we, you know, we were a place where um, people come to get the backpack filled with hygiene and and birth certificates. So we are still communicating with those because life goes on. Yeah. So we try to take safety precautions for ourselves and, and doing what we have to do to support those people who are in need of, of some support getting out here like, you know, if I didn't have my family or whatever, I don't know where I'd be or mm -hmm. or hadn't been in the midst of this. You know, my last prison sentence wasn't my first, mm -hmm. you know. So I, 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 I knew to take advantage of a lot of the programs that came to um, Bandai Women Prison. And, and that's what I done. And, and I drew up on those things and I reached out for those resources. I knew to ask for the help. Mm -hmm. that I may need when before I wouldn't ask for that help. You know, I'm going to be so prideful that I'm not asking for it, knowing I need the help. Yeah. You know, but um, I'm glad that we are still assisting those people. And so far, me and my colleagues, no one have came in contact with a COVID person or, or got that. So, you know, I'm, I'm just grateful for sure. the covering of us that while we continue to do what we have to do of helping someone else, that we are not, you know, putting ourselves in a dangerous risk as well. 
So for those of y'all that are just now connecting, we're having a quarantine conversation with Tony Jordan. I'm calling her a community hero because even in the midst of quarantine, she is working with those that have experienced recovery, those that are in recovery, those that are coming out of prison. Um, she provides and she leads a support group uh, for women who have been previously incarcerated. She's also helping take people who are struggling right now um, with drug addiction and drug abuse. Tony, what can uh, people who maybe who have never experienced incarceration or never suffered from a, a drug addiction, how can we support um, those that that may be struggling right now? What are some of the things that we can say? What can we do? I know most definitely you all can pray. Prayer works. I believe in prayer, you know, and for those who don't understand the um, the horror of addiction, um, just be mindful of where a person is at. You know, it, yeah, it became a choice at first, but once that choice was made, then it, it affected us mentally, you know. So that's why it is now in the DSM as a mental health disorder. Um, but most definitely prayer. Uh, most definitely if, if you know someone or you have a family member, is listen and try to get help. You know, I'm one here. I hope anybody that um, is um, in need of a resource that you reach out to me. I am on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I do work for Criminal Justice Ministries. Um, my email is tonyj at c-j-m-s-t-l-o-u-i-s dot org. You know, reach out to me and I, I'm willing to support you in whatever um, answers you may need answered um, or whatever, but just continue to support us. Like we are always in need of hygiene, you know, to give to the women and men who are coming out of prison. Um, like, um, we also send um, clothing boxes to those men who are coming home. Mm -hmm. We have started beginning supporting women because before criminal justice ministries was only for male. But now that um, let's start merged with CJM last April. They have been opening up and doing things for women. Like we will have a women house that is opening up soon mm -hmm. that women could come from prison and have somewhere to go. That was one of my like niches that I really wanted. I encountered a lot of women who didn't have a place to go and Vandalia hosting people until they have that. And I understand that. But anybody that want to get out of prison is not wanting to wait. You know, they, and I want that place to be there for those women. So we do have that, that'll be opening up soon. But most definitely I know is, is prayer work. Prayer. Very good. Very good. Um, Tony, I'm going to ask for you to move a little. Yeah. Cause the screen was uh, cutting off you, but you're perfect right now. So I know your, your job also takes children of inmates to the prison so that they can see their parents. Or, um, but I know now with like this whole quarantine, the prisons aren't allowing the kids to be able to see their parents. So can you just talk a little bit about what that must be like for um, the women inside and even for the children not being able to see their parents? Yeah, we um done a bus trip monthly of maybe um, 10 to 15 families, a 44 passenger bus, and that bus will be filled at times. So um, these families have been aching as well as the women and grandmothers and people in prison um, to see their loved ones, you know, having that, that connection to the outside world really helps a woman or a male get mm -hmm. through their time. I know it did for me. And so it does for the people that we serve and um, that take part in our bus trip. I have heard that, but you know, it's kids that's just not understand. I had a young lady reach out to me and say, because, um, you know, it's tablets up there. And she was thinking, like, was this some kind of video mm -hmm. that they could do? And I reached out to IAC at um, Vandalia, and they was like, no, you know, it's nothing like that. So it has been a difficult time, mm -hmm. as well as for these children not seeing their parents, and and as well as the parents on the inside 
not being able to um, really see, you know, it's, it's, it's a phone call, but ain't nothing like seeing your people face to face, enjoying some time and everything, you know, that that's an awesome moment. And I can sit back because I have to go in the visiting room to, and when we take them there, and I get to see those joyful faces, those smiles lighting up, you know, mm -hmm. and and get to take all that in as a memory. And so it, it's a difficult time right now, but I've been reaching out to them. So far, everybody is okay, you know, and dealing with things, but they are waiting for the moment that they could go back up there and see their parents. Sure. So as someone that has been previously incarcerated, suffered from a drug addiction and you now lead support groups can um, there may be some people that are watching that have never um, been to a support group. They don't know what it's like. They don't know why it's beneficial. And I know like during this time of quarantine, um, you've been having weekly support groups online. Can you just share why these support groups are important? Well, um, for one, it's just like, um, I don't want to lose anyone. You know, a lot of us has came a long way. For me, myself, I am in my 16th year of recovery, and I want to keep moving forward, mm -hmm. you know. And so being home and, and not around my supportive family, you know, my family don't support me like my support group women does. And so I was like, what? But I was hearing about these Zoom meetings, um, uh, um, boards and things that I sit on, they was having... So I said, let me try to host a Zoom meeting. And I got on there. I'm not technology savvy, but hey, I made it work. And so we've been doing that maybe about a month, maybe about two months now. That every Tuesday, 630, we have a Zoom meeting call. And I usually post it on Facebook. So if anybody want to reach out to me, I am on Facebook. Tony Jordan is my name. And um, I could send you that link to get on the call with us tonight. And those women really appreciate it. I knew it was going to be kind of difficult for them because most of them are not technology savvy, but mm -hmm. a lot of them was getting their grandkids or their daughters or whoever to help them to mm -hmm. get on Zoom. And, and, and I was just encouraging them, keep trying. Keep trying. They calling me while we on the Zoom call, and I would be like, "Keep trying, keep trying," you know. Um, but we have carried that meeting on because I needed that strength. I needed to see those faces. I needed to to get the strength from them women, and I wanted didn't want to lose no one. Yeah. You know, and and so because people could get lonely. Boredom is a trigger. Loneliness is a trigger. You know. And, and and some people don't know how to spend this time, like really improving yourself or doing something. And so for me, like it has been like continually working, but I also began picking up a book and, and reading a book. I hadn't read a book in a long time mm -hmm. you know, because of what my jobs and things was calling me to do. And I just felt like I didn't have that time. Yeah. But I didn't want to make this a waste time. I also have bad credit and, me and my daughter had sat down and we began working on our credit, you know, sending letters out to these creditors and mm -hmm. trying to get things removed and late payments and things, you know, because I want to be a better person. Just because this happened and put a halt in everything, it was still things that we could do to improve yourself, your uh, relationship or whatever it was. So it has been a, a great moment to know that things could go on especially with this technology thank god for cell phones and live and you know, <laughs> things yeah. like that you know and if people use facebook correctly hey facebook is awesome way of a media you know yeah so i'm hearing i'm hearing you say a couple of things one is is that the support groups are not only beneficial for those that participate, but you have found them to be beneficial for you as well. Oh, most definitely. And, and that's how I feel about these quarantine conversations. People have said, oh, this has been a blessing, but you know what? You know, I started it because I needed community, mm -hmm. you know, that I was feeling isolated. Yeah. And um, 
you know, it's amazing how God will give us what we need. And, mm. you know, it's also able to help others. So I'm hearing that. And I'm also hearing that even in this quarantine um, and you've been in recovery, you, you've done all of that. But yet um, the idea of progressing and becoming better, it does not stop. So it's mm -hmm. it's not like I just want to not do drugs. <laughs> I just not want to be in prison. But you're yeah. like, I want to be a better Tony. Yes. Yes. And I think that's the win for all of us coming out yes. of quarantine, that we want to be the best version of ourselves. And yeah. God is having all of us, you know, sit down, be still, be quiet, you know, even while working, even while serving. Mm -hmm. But so we can get the downloads on how to be the best, the best version yeah. of ourselves. You know, I look at myself just like being in the furnace, like Meshach, Abednego, and, mm -hmm. and, um, What's the other brother? You know, Shad Rat. They, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, came out not smelling like smoke and died. They had it so hot that they should have been burned it as a crisp. But you <laughs> know, no, I ain't no way I'm gonna sit in here. And this has been, I think I've been home since like March 12, 10, somewhere like that. You know, we in May. I cannot let you know that be dead time. And so I was, I'm glad I. I came out of that and was like, let me do something around here. You know, even though, you know, I, I rested a bit, but then you get tired of being in bed. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, let me get up out this bed and I really ain't trying to go out, you know. I used to think I was invincible during my bad years, you know, those active using years. But to know the day, like, oh, that could be me. Yeah. You know, and most definitely I don't want it to be me. So let me take my precautions. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Tony, I mentioned again that you are a community hero. You've received awards. You've yeah. been profiled on the front page of your jobs newsletter. Um, mm -hmm. You sit on uh, several local boards here in the St. Louis community. You have done a lot. Um, you are a woman of influence, you Thank know, you. in the in this realm of mental health, advocacy, reentry. You have a lot of influence. Um, how do you handle that influence responsibly? And, um, you know, do you ever feel like your past wants to pull you back or cause you to shrink? Well, I don't think so because I, I have passion for what I do. Like, it's not just a job for me. This is my life. You know, and helping other people, I know in the midst of that, God helps me. So, you know, if God brought me out, I know he can do it for a million others. And if I can be a part of that process, then let me do that. Let me be that vessel to be able to help you and guide you or, or mentor you out of that crazy, crazy chaos that we put ourselves in. You know, so I just, you know, it's, it's a passion. And it's in me that I I could I do this and and being a part of the different things you know I work with Gateway Housing first I love housing you know many years I walked the streets of St Louis and and when it was cold whether it was hot wanted to be in 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 a place but people don't want to let you in if you ain't got no money you ain't got no dope you ain't coming in. Don't want to go home because home, they ain't doing what, what I want to be doing. You know, I need to be out here so I can get this substance, you know, and, and, and being and living like that for a long time. And now finally having me a shelter and a place over my head and a key and that I can unlock the doors and come in, you know, be cool when it's hot outside, mm -hmm. be warm, you know, has been the, the most the best thing that ever happened to me, you know, like I can sit up and pull to my home and cry most days to be thankful mm -hmm. that I am not that person out here not knowing where I'm going to get my next meal from. You know, um, I want to get off these streets, don't want to go home because I want to be where the happening is. And people just, mm -mm, they don't care for you like that. And today I see more women in trash cans, found dead on lots or, or being shot. And I know that you is probably in that area doing 
what I would have been doing. So that keeps me rooted and grounded that ain't nothing changed. Mm -hmm. I ain't trying to die. I'm thankful that my family, my husband didn't have to get the knock at the door that can you come and identify this woman? Is this your wife? You know, I'm, I am grateful for that because, like I said, I lost a friend out there, you know, doing the same thing I'm doing, smoking dope in the vaco and got her throat slit. That could have been me. Yeah. You know, that could have been me. And and I, and I, and like I said, things didn't got worse today, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and so, no, I don't want to go back out there. So I really don't think about it. I think every day as, as, as being thankful and grateful and I, I, I praise God in the shower, on the bathroom, wherever I'm at, you know, like, God, thank you mm -hmm. yeah. for covering me. Just like this young lady, you know, dying from asthma today. Thank you, God, for covering me. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a lot of people that came out of addiction to die. And that ain't what I wanted to come out and do, God. I say, hey, I'm 16. God, I'm only 16 years old, mm -hmm. you know. Let me live a little bit, do a little of your work, you know, continue to bless me and, and let me see some things, you know, and I am doing that and I'm grateful for all that, you know, so it, it's just a passion of mine to be a part and be on those boards and, and to be out here helping people like I do is, is really a passion. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a blessing and it's it's really a blessing to see because. Um, because of your influence, I had the opportunity to sit a little bit on a support group, but it's obvious um, that you have the respect of the women. You respect them. Yep. They respect you. You have influence. You're able to communicate. You know, that's one of the things uh, that Alfred said, you know, she, she's <laughs> able to communicate, you know, what reaches the heart, you know, comes from the heart. It reaches the heart. And, um, you know, you're able to communicate with those that are, you know, struggling or in recovery. And you're also able to communicate with those as you sit on a board and yeah. tell your story and yeah. advocate for those that are in need. I know you mentioned uh, that one of the things that you're working on right now is like your credit. Um, yeah. I know one of the things that I'm working on in quarantine is uh, my husband and I, we've identified some projects that we want to tackle in our house, just like some mm -hmm. home improvement stuff. Um, what else is God putting on your heart um, for to do at while we're in quarantine? Well, I guess just to keep encouraging those women, you know, I was thankful that I felt comfortable enough or, you know, to even think of the Zoom meeting, you know, and, and, and so instead of like now, canceling the meeting I can always have a zoom meeting whether I'm away at a meeting in Jeff City or anything I can always carry that meeting on regardless to where I am so that has opened my eyes up mm -hmm. but the most thing that like I said I just want to come out of here improved you know um it's I, I can always say ain't nothing wrong with me but yeah I just want to be a better person yeah you know, I want to be a better person. I, I have, I want to know, I know where my help come from and that's God. And, and I want to depend more on him. So being more prayerful, you know, and not thinking that it's a busy day that I can't communicate with God or whatever, you know, so that, that has been one of the things that I work on too, is, is just whether I read, my daughter had got me some um, inspirational cards for uh, Mother's Day with like things out the Bible. So I want to stay connected. I I want to do more and, and just taking the small steps take me on to something bigger, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and, and I just want to make sure that I am a much better person coming out of, of being around for two weeks, for two months, you know, also looking at my health and wellness, you know, I don't want to be in here eating up everything and not, you know, I'm not an active person. I'd had a lot of physical abuse throughout the time. So my body and knees are bad. But, you know, I don't want to harm myself more than helping myself during this time of quarantine. So I have been, you know, looking at my health and well-being, watching what I eat and thinking about those things, too, as well. That's good. That's really good because, you know, um, I've never struggled with a uh, alcohol or drug addiction, but I've definitely struggled with the food addiction. And, um, you know, sometimes I feel like I went through that 
And um, if I'm not careful, it, it's like, it's like an addiction, you, you, yeah. you know, yeah. and so, you know, people, they always kind of, you know, roll their eyes or whatever, because not everybody understands if you've never been addicted. I don't care if it's you food, if it's drugs, yeah. if it's sex, but it is like a whole, it is yeah. literally like, yeah. it is a form of bondage where you're like, you got to consume. So whether it's food or whether it's drugs or whether it's alcohol, an addiction is, yeah. you know, it's yeah. no yeah. joke. It's no joke. So, but we both know about the power of God to break, to break every chain, you know, and not, every, everything must bow to the name of Jesus. And, you know, my pastor, he has a great way of saying this, but he was like, you know, Jesus Christ, he set us free. And, um, you know, so the freedom is there, but we have to make the choice. Yeah. you know, to develop the right habits to stay free. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, that's how I look at food. And I mean, I'm sure anybody can look at drugs the same way or whatever addiction, like the power has been broken by Jesus mm. Christ. It's already been done, but we have the free will. and We must make the choice, choice. To live free. To yeah. live free. So Tony, we are coming up at the end of our time together, but I just want you to share again about, your uh, support group and share that information and just so people can get in contact with you. All right. So again, I want to thank you all for coming on listening for one thing. And, um, but my name is Tony Jordan. You can find me on Facebook. My um, email at criminal justice ministries is Tony T O N I J at S. It's Tony J at C J M S T L O U I S dot org. And um, I will have, I can hook you up to that Zoom meeting mm -hmm. later. Um, if you want to get that link, I can do just that to get you, um, you know, on that line with us. <laughs> I just, ooh, like, really, to, it's really, y'all. <laughs> but um yeah so yeah tony jordan on facebook yeah tony j at cjm s-t-l-o-u-i-s dot org is my email please reach out if it's anything you may have old clothing or whatever but hey we take all kind of donations and everything so thank you all again thanks Casey sister yes sister sister yes and you know I just believe that our paths are going to cross even more look don't look at your family with them death glares don't even do it look <laughs> this is I love it because this is QC this is life in quarantine <laughs> this is life in quarantine this life in quarantine I think a couple of um, days ago. Hi, how are you? <laughs> now, who are you? Who's that? That's Joe. That's my youngest. Hi, how are yeah. you? Hi, you good. may have saw me on Facebook a couple of um, last year or so when she got shot. Mm. Yeah, that's my baby. All right, but well, your baby, she's looking strong and healthy right now. Yeah, I'm trying to keep her that way, Casey. Yeah. Thank you. That's why the prayer works. Yes, yes, you know? yes. All right. Well, we'll be continuing to keep her in covering and just Thank in a you. prayer covering. Absolutely. All right, Tony. So um, I'm going to talk to you later. Okay? OK. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you today. for having me. I love yes. you. Love you too, sister. I'll talk All to right. you later. Love you, sister. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, y'all. I pray that you enjoyed that QC. Um, you know, one of the great things about Tony is that she just provides us another perspective of what life is like um, for her in quarantine and for many others that are working on the front lines, working with those coming out of prison, making sure that they have what they need, um, supporting those that are in the midst of recovery, that they've made the decision and said, you know what, I don't want to do the drugs. I don't want to do the alcohol. And then everything shuts down. They are in need of support. So Tony said, one of the things that we can do is we can just pray. That's one thing that we can do. We can also support, give clothes, you know, by reaching out to Tony. I'm going to put her email address up. Uh, maybe your church or your ministry would like to take part and just support some of the things that Tony is doing uh, with the criminal justice ministry here in St. Louis. So please reach out and contact her. Uh, normally, I ask our guests to pray, but I didn't get a chance to do that with Tony. So I'm just going to pray a blessing over you. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, God, for your daughters and even your sons that have joined in to watch this broadcast. 
Father, I pray a blessing upon them, God. And Lord, I pray, Father, that Lord, just what was shared by Tony through her experience, I pray God for a greater level of compassion and, and a heart, Lord, for those that are incarcerated uh, physically and those that are incarcerated due to an addiction. I pray, God, that we'll be the church. God, we'll listen, we'll support, we'll pray, we'll intercede, we won't judge. But God, I just pray that, Lord, we'll, we'll just be your hands and feet, God, and, and we'll respond in the way how Jesus would respond. Father, we cover Tony, we cover her daughter, we cover her family, God, we cover her health. And God, we just thank you, Lord, for her taking time out of her day, for her, for her to just share. And God, I thank you, Lord, for every viewer, those watching live, those watching the replay. God, meet every need that they may have. God, show yourself powerful and mighty to them right now, right at this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining in. If you have found this, this broadcast to be helpful, will you do me a favor and will you share this? Will you start a watch party? Maybe somebody else would really benefit from today's content. And the only way that they will see it is by you sharing it or starting a watch party to your circle of influence. Also, as always, if you ever miss any of our broadcasts, I want to invite you to check out our YouTube page and you can catch the replays of all of our previous guests. So whether you're doing laundry, cooking dinner, cleaning your house, just, just, Go to YouTube and just let these conversations play. I assure you, God will speak to you through these interviews. There's power in our stories and there's power in just being connected. And so it's always just a privilege to spend this hour with you each and every day. So I'll be back tomorrow. Got another great guest and we're going to continue quarantine conversations, at least for the next couple of weeks. OK, all right, you guys, I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.